Hi, and welcome to my low-tech solution for my presentation on hemoglobin and oxygen binding. Um, so first I want to talk about diffusion of gases. So gases primarily move from through diffusion, and that is from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So both oxygen and CO2 are going to move from um, like so oxygen is going to move from the oxygen rich environment of the alveola into the um, low oxygen deoxygenated blood. So that's going to pull those that oxygen um, in. Um, transversely, carbon dioxide is going to be um, um, diffused from the areas of high concentration in the deoxygenated blood into the lung, the alveola, where it's, there's um, low concentrations of carbon dioxide. Um, so once the, once the, the gas particles have um, diffused into the blood, how then does it move around? Well, that is through um, the, the gases get transported on heme primarily, especially oxygen in hemoglobin. So first of all, how does it bind to hemoglobin? Um, and again, we had already talked about diffusion. So it's where the movement of particles um, from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So oxygen moves from areas of high partial pressures of oxygen to areas of low partial pressures of oxygen. Another effect on binding is a thing called the Bohr effect. That is that high pH increases the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen. So decreased CO2 raises the pH. So um, why would CO2 decrease? And that's because it has diffused out of the blood and into the um, alveola. So that would increase the affinity of hemoglobin for the oxygen. So then the oxygen, the hemoglobin picks up the oxygen and carries it to the rest of the body. Now, the transverse of that basically is the Haldane effect. And that says that increases in partial pressures of oxygen decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for CO2. So whereas the lungs have a high PO2 and um, um, the, um, the, the, that high PO2 decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for carbon dioxide and so then it's released at the lungs and then the CO2 is dispersed into the alveola, so diffused. So then let's talk about a little about, so that's a little bit about binding and about how oxygen binds onto the hemoglobin and then releasing again through diffusion. So those particles are gonna move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So as the, as the CO2 moves from those areas of high PCO2 to areas of low PCO2, that helps to release the, the oxygen. Um, then the Bohr effect has an effect on the releasing as well. So uh, low pH decreases the affinity of, of hemoglobin to oxygen. So an increased CO2 will lower the pH and so therefore increase the affinity of, of hemoglobin to oxygen. So the, the process of that is that the carbonic anhydrase, which is an enzyme, it catalyzes the reaction of CO2 with water to form the carbonic acid. And then carbonic acid spontaneously disassociates into bicarbonate and a hydrogen ion. And we know that the, the presence of hydrogen ions will increase the pH. So, and then also the Haldane effect has an effect on the release as well. So as we decrease decreases in partial pressures of oxygen will increase the affinity of hemoglobin for CO2. And as the hemoglobin increases that, if that affinity for CO2, oxygen is, is pushed off. We know that capillaries and tissues have low partial pressures of oxygen. So that is where the CO2 um, um, is increased. That, that, so, so capillaries and tissues have a low P, PO2 so that increases the affinity of hemoglobin for carbon dioxide and so pushes the oxygen off that causes that helps cause that release so what happens with the hemoglobin the shape of the hemoglobin as it picks up oxygen molecules so first of all let's talk about that hemoglobin is actually four heme groups 
surrounding the globin group, forming a tetrahedral structure. The first oxygen molecule facilitates the binding of the other three oxygen molecules, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. So once the first oxygen molecule binds to the heme ion, um, I, atom, and that's that. So here is a deoxygenated heme. And so you can see that the um, iron atom there bound to the histidine here. And so as the oxygen binds to the iron, it lifts the iron molecule up to the plane of the heme. And that in turn, that bind pulls that histidine key up and that in turn, um, those that, that change is transmitted throughout the protein chain, which changes the binding structure of the neighboring sites. So you can see here, this is what's called the T state. That's the tense state. This is a deoxygenated heme and you hit that tensed state hemoglobin. Then you get that the relaxed state. So this is an oxygen bound to that iron that's pulled it up to that plane and you get the relaxed state and that is, has a higher affinity for oxygen. So that structure, like I said, structure affects affinity. So in the relaxed state, the oxygen molecule binding cause the initial oxygen binding causing causes the transition to this state and, and the subsequent as well. When at least three oxygen molecules are bound, this state becomes, becomes quite stable and there has a high affinity for oxygen. In the T state, which is the favored or natural shape of the protein, it, there's a low affinity for oxygen. My mentor, when he was training me to become a respiratory therapist, he used to tell me that oxygen was shy and they doesn't want to sit at the table. So once the first oxygen sits at the table, then the other oxygen feel more comfortable to join them and they sit. So you get the tense state and it becomes progressively less tense until you've got that full oxygen um, association and then it becomes a very strongly favored state in that relaxed state as the um, hemoglobin or the, the oxyhemoglobin molecule then moves through the blood and then the effects start to, the diffusion of, of gases start to have and the partial pressures of gases and the pH start to have an effect on that affinity and it releases and redraw, it comes back into that um, tense state. So let's talk a little bit about the transport of carbon dioxide because that has a huge effect on the pH of the blood, which as we know, has an effect on association and affinity. So first of all, about 70% of carbon dioxide is transported in the plasma as dissolved gas. Then about 32% is transported as um, carboamino hemoglobin. Um, that is that um, carbon dioxide sitting in that same bind iron binding site as oxygen. But about 70% of all carbon dioxide is transported in bicarbonate ions in the plasma. So carbon dioxide in the blood, as it diffuses into the blood, it binds with the water of the blood to form carbonic acid, which rapidly converts to bicarbonate and, and um, a hydrogen ion. So the bicarbonate ions diffuse into the plasma. They're ne then a negatively charged chloride ions move into the red blood cell to balance the movement of the bicarbonate out of the cell. And that's called the chloride shift. So near the alveola, the CO2 is generated from the bicarbonate. Um, and you can see then that bicarbonate plus the hydrogen forms that it's just sort of in, in reverse, the carbonic acid which then, um, which spontaneously breaks down into water and carbon dioxide, which then diffuses, moves th into the alveola through diffusion. So that pH, that, that, that pH shift of the blood from um, neutral to, or from acidic to, to basic, well, it doesn't really shift that much. Um, it's, a normal pH of, of blood is about 7.4, between 7.35 to 7.45. So um, bicarbonate is going to decrease 
the or increase the the pH, but the hydrogen is going to and carbon dioxide is going to to decrease that pH. So thanks for watching and I look forward to talking to you.